Hey beautiful people, my name is Kristen. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I have some book reviews. I normally do like an end of the month book reviews where I just kind of touch on anything and then if there's a book that's particularly meaningful for me, I do that as a separate review. And I was thinking I was going to read a whole lot less in the month of July, so I kind of did a TBR goals for July and August because I was supposed to be completely away, even away from Wi-Fi and COVID got my team. I was going to lead a team on a trip and two of us came up positive. I um, had just been out of quarantine but still not fully recovered and eight people on my team had been exposed to somebody that week so it was too much to go away. But honestly it made me very very sad y'all. And when I'm very sad and I'm quarantined and something I was supposed to do is cancelled, you read a lot. <laughs> So now I think I have like eight books plus one that I DNF'd that I have to share with you in the middle of the month. So I went from thinking I would read maybe two books in two weeks to I've read nine books in two weeks. So let me tell you about them and see if any of these are ones that you would be interested in. I did a try a chapter after I did booktube spin six there were 20 books that were mostly dollar tree books that i had no intention to read i wanted to kind of get rid of some of these books that i've just got stacks and stacks of books to be read so i wanted to try them but there were two that came up in the spin one was look alive out there by sloan crosley this is a non-fiction group of essays and it came up in my spin and i read it and it, it was okay I appreciated her voice and her sharing some of these. I, When I kind of got to the end, I enjoyed them when I read them. Um, there was particularly, probably the one that sticks out the most was a story that she was telling about getting to have like a little cameo on a TV show comedy where she played herself and was supposed to be this eccentric kind of author and she got to play herself. But I mean, at the end of the book, I was kind of like, okay, those were great stories, now what? Uh, she has written some other books, so I'd be interested in picking up some of her other writing. I did enjoy her writing, but um, I guess I just struggled a little bit with where it was going, or I'm kind of that way when you, when you have a bunch of short stories, trying to put it together is sometimes a little more challenging. And then, y'all, I repent. I repent that I gave this book a hard time. The After Room, uh, I think it's Mele Malloy is how you say her name, the author. This is actually a middle grade book, y'all. I had no idea. And I, I was correct in assuming that this has some magical elements. So this is the third in a trilogy, which is why I was really giving it a hard time. But I went ahead and read it without having read the first two and it was okay. I totally understood. It is a middle grade, book trilogy that basically starts out with a gentleman who is a apothecary a physician pharmacist sorry who makes up a magic formula that in the first book it turns people into whatever bird they really are and there's a mystery and there's like one of those kids on adventure kind of thing and the kind of there's definitely no sex or no hardcore violence but the bad things that happen or the romances that happen are very very PG very very easy to read along and it is really clever it this one is the um, leftover kind of residue of take the people who have experienced this powder can communicate with each other and so one of them has passed on like died and they're still able to have this kind of after room where if somebody is in the state of of having this can still somehow communicate and they're trying to solve a, a puzzle and mystery and actually part of it is like nuclear bomb with china kind of thing and so it's really really far-fetched and and out there and unbelievable in that sense like if you were reading this as an adult book it would be no it would be a no-go it would be too much but as a children's kind of epic journey harry potter 
that kind of mindset. It's fun and I totally, I'm not going to pay full price to go buy the other two books, but I'm absolutely going to look for them in the used bookstores or whatnot. And I highly would recommend this for young readers. I absolutely would. I think it's fantastic. So great middle grade series that I now think is adorable. Love the characters. Love it. Then I went on to pick up my two classics. So if you're classic readers, this part is definitely for you. Those were the two books that I most wanted to get to July. One was Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is for Jane Austen July. I visited a Discord group read that's kind of looking at it together, but this is Jane Austen's novel about that predominantly centers around the character Fanny Price, who is a girl who has some challenges and that she just is very weak. We don't know exactly what's wrong with her, but she's just physically unable to walk long distances or to keep up the pace of life, so to speak. But she has a lot of intellect, a lot of reading, a lot of reflecting, and it's one of those Victorian stories where there's just the drama of family issues, of trying to have good marriages, trying to get properties and accounts and estates and visiting. And, uh, you know, you have like challenges of locked gates and having to go around and get keys and so it's that slow moving kind of pace but you're always looking for the character development and the relationship developments and it's a good fun Jane Austen kind of ride and I I really liked it I don't think it's the best I don't think it's necessarily five star but I thought it was definitely a four star I could go along with it it wasn't compelling or the characters like sucking you in like some of hers do but it was definitely a fun classic and and not bad pick for July really either then I buddy read with Sandy at Miss Reads a lot we completed Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy if you've watched my channel you know I just have a real interesting relationship with Thomas Hardy I have love hate uh he just, I've just summed it up and made peace with it in my mind that he is my Shakespearean tragedy, Victorian age style writer. I love his writing. I love how he talks about things roundabout. You read you just like the first paragraph of a, a new section so I can best describe. It says, how Gillingham's doubts were disposed of will most quickly appear by passing over the series of the dreary months and incidents that followed the events of the last chapter and coming on to a Sunday in February of the year following. Sue and Jude were living in Alderbrickham in precisely the same relations that they had established between themselves when they left Shaston to join him the year before. So instead of like saying, you know, it's now been a year or two years later, you know, it's this, you know, following this, which has happened in the previous chapters, it's like talking an aside to the audience and explaining it in this very proper kind of way. I love it. I love it. So if you appreciate that kind of writing, I would encourage you to pick up a Thomas Hardy. Now, this book, what we had kind of heard was that it was sad and we honestly as we were buddy reading it going through it is so much kind of drama and we just got to the point where we thought it was kind of funny and then it got really dramatic and and kind of tragic that shakespearean tragedy kind of stuff and so you kind of have to pause and as a human like mourn and take all that in and then you have to switch your mindset to say Thomas Hardy is just using all of this just like Shakespeare does you know you know at the end of the play everybody's gonna be doom and gloom and gone you know it's you're lucky to survive a Shakespeare tragedy and you're lucky to survive a Thomas Hardy book so this is definitely a tragedy story it is a young boy that we follow growing up through all the way to his death and he is pining for a girl and he is struggling in the concepts of marriage as are a couple other characters so it is I don't want to spoiler this is totally totally spoiler free but if you like the kind of family marriage drama and you're willing to go with what I said about Thomas Hardy's tragedy and, and writing 
I really, really enjoyed it. It's all the way up to where there was a real crisis tragedy near the end. I had to pause, actually set the book aside, kind of take that into stride, put it back in the frame of mind, and then go back to it and then finish it out. Um, so yeah, Jude the Obscure. I, I took, I, if that, if it had been a little bit different, I think I might've even given this five stars um, as it is. I think it's a solid four stars. I really, really like Thomas Hardy. Totally gonna keep reading him. Um, yeah, so there's that. Nonfiction, if you are one of my nonfiction things, I'll go ahead and start with a DNF. Uh, I read A Tokyo Romance. This is a memoir of a gentleman who is in Tokyo and it was just a little weird for me. I just have to be honest. I read the first chapter, which is like his experience um, kind of going to Tokyo to a new city and kind of getting immersed in the culture. And, um, and then I noticed there was a bunch of pictures in it. So I just started scanning through because he, I didn't know that I connected to him or his lifestyle or mindset because it seemed like he was in that place of just being um, a party spirit and not wanting to do the right things, not wanting to be responsible, not wanting to um, be true to relationships, kind of seeking out, um, you know, just, just a party lifestyle, trying to figure out uh, who he was in sexual identity, trying to figure out who he was in society. And then I just kind of started going through, I was like, I'm not sure I want to go on this journey with this writing in this way and uh, I read through the pictures and kind of the stories that were going along with the pictures and then I read the last chapter and kind of summed up um yeah and that's that I decided this is not the book for me but if that kind of sounds interesting to you and you want to be on that kind of adventure there it is I also for work read Scriptures and the Skeptic by Eric Huffman, Huffman and this is a book of apologetics so if you are the kind of person that wants to read about kind of what does the archaeology and the facts say about the Bible and how you apply that this was somebody who was completely against the fact that a lot of this stuff had even happened and you know trying to wrestle that through Honestly, they were all arguments or evidence that I have read before. Um, it didn't like, you know, present anything new to me, but it was well written. And I think if you haven't read all the other books that I have read, that that one would be a really good, easy, accessible kind of read for that. I also read The Rose Hotel, this beautiful, beautiful book uh, about, um, I'm not positive how to say her name, Rama. And a bullion and a blion. and it's her memoir of moving um, through Iran during the time of the Iranian crisis and what was cool is it starts with her as a young girl in the Rose Hotel which is a prominent hotel near the kind of holy lands of Iran where the wealthy tourists and diplomats would come through and would you know stay there and so her and her siblings were kind of part of this but perceiving it through the eyes of a child and then the trouble comes and they are kind of ousted from their hotel um, a couple People that are involved in crime are kind of even sheltered there for a little while and kind of pose some danger to the family and then that story develops um, it's 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 a memoir so it's not necessarily happy ending or easy answers or problem solving everything but it's an interesting perspective to kind of go through so I did appreciate that voice um, you know at times you were like wanting it to be something that it wasn't because that's not how history played out, if you understand. But um, it's a, it was an interesting story and definitely one worth telling. So glad that she wrote that. Oh, and I forgot, I set this aside. I was supposed to talk about this first. I finished this, I started this last month in June and I finished it in July and this is outstanding. So I know a lot of people have talked about this 
And this is just a powerful story based on a true story where the author really interviewed the gentleman that the main character as well as many other people to get a historically significant picture of what was going on during World War II uh, Nazis and the just kind of gripping um, aspect of what was happening in Italy. His romance that was going on during that time, his family struggles that were going on during that time, just trying to make peace with so many horrors and atrocities. And his point of view was so amazing because he was actually hired to be the driver for an enemy officer. And so he was like a spy and playing both sides and it was brilliant. So highly recommend this if you haven't gotten a chance to pick it up yet. Then being 4th of July in America celebrating independence, I decided it was great to be reading Nathaniel Philbrick's Valiant Ambition. This is uh, The American Revolution with George Washington Benedict Ar Arnold and it really focuses on Benedict Arnold and his real life and things that I had no idea. I mean I didn't even know if the man was married or not before I picked up this book and just getting to know even his personal relationships and and about his wife and and how influential she was like I really feel like if he had fallen in love or chosen a different woman that all of history might have been different and just how his betrayal I mean we all know from early bringing up in American history you know Benedict Arnold is the traitor of the country uh but just how monumental that was and how he had done some really great things prior to turning traitor and how he was kind of mistreated and maybe why not that you're ever justified to do bad choices but you can kind of understand people so this is a great book uh definitely this is definitely nonfiction. um i was thinking it was more historical fiction but it's actually very much nonfiction and documentary style so if you're interested in that kind of history this is really easy to to understand and follow along with the author and get some new knowledge so I look forward very much to reading more of Nathaniel Philbrook's work I loved his Mayflower as well so that is what I read in the first half can you believe it that's a lot oh and, and I tried the chapter in 18 books, so I can um, leave that link if you want below where I kind of reviewed those books. Some of those remained on my TBR. A lot of them are now going away, but the fact that I tried a chapter in 18 books, I consider that a whole nother book. <laughs> So that is it for my reviews and thoughts so far. At the end of the month, I probably will only have two, maybe three books because I'm reading The Great Hunt, um, Robert Jordan, The Second Wheel in Time book, which is a really thick novel. So that one will probably take up most of that time the rest of the month. But I need to revisit my TBR for August because honestly, I think there is only one or two left on my TBR from July, August. So I'll need to do some more. So hit that like and subscribe if you will. Come along, let's see where it goes. If you've read any of these books and wanna leave me a comment about them or if you want to read them now, leave me a comment below. Let's chat about these books. Thanks y'all, I really appreciate you taking time stopping by.